Hello friends, today we will study what is a job scheduling problem. Using the greedy approach, how we can solve these problems and how the processor and the time scheduled for each process can give us an optimal solution. So, what is job sequencing with deadlines? That is a major issue which needs to be studied in the job scheduling. So, the problem is stated as below. Now, what do we do? There are n jobs which needs to be processed on a machine. A process is nothing but a small program which needs to be executed on a machine. And we are assuming that there are n such processes which needs to be executed. And each job has a deadline which is greater than or equal to zero and the profit P is greater than or equal to zero. What is a profit? Profit is nothing but what we are going to gain after we undergo this particular process on a machine. And each machine, each process has a deadline. If you take an example, if you are trying to load some things on your internet and your net is working a little slow, then it says a timeout because everything has some deadline time amount limited. So that after which it says it's a time out scenario. So every job which is sequenced to be processed on a machine has a deadline. With every deadline, the job sequences takes up a new process. And P, that is the profit which is earned if job is completed by its deadline. And if it is not, then the profit is not earned. There's some gain for the every process that is completed before the deadline scenario. The job is completed if it is processed on a machine for a unit amount of time. Whatever time is allotted for the process to complete, if it completes in that particular scenario, then we say it does not meet the deadline, it is completed in that particular unit time. Only one machine is available for processing the job. These are the few criteria which we are going to consider for job sequences with deadlines. Only one job is processed at a time on the machine. As we see, there are n number of jobs. Every job has a deadline. And if a job completes in a perfect amount of time, that is the unit time, then there's a profit gain given for that particular process and the job. There's only one machine available for processing the job. And there's one job which is processed on the machine at a time. So what do we do? A feasible solution is a subset of jobs J such that each job is completed by its deadline. So whatever deadline is given, we assume that each job is completed with its deadline. An optimal solution is a feasible solution with the maximum profit value. The one which gives me the maximum profit is the most feasible solution. Let's take an example. If there are n number of jobs which needs to be done, that is n is equal to 4. I have four processes, P1, P2, P3 and P4 and the values assigned to P1, P2, P3, P4 are 100, 10, 15 and 27. These are the processes which needs to work on. And these are the deadlines, that is 2, 1, 2, 1. With this deadline, this process has to complete. Otherwise, it does not gain any profit. When I try to complete all my processes under the deadline criteria, then only I get a profit value. So, what happens? I have a particular set of values which I have taken from the previous ones. I have created a deadline scenario line over here which says the, all the jobs which are done after will not give me an optimal solution. The processes are 100, 10, 15 and 27 and the deadlines are 2, 1, 2, 1. These are the factors which needs to be considered and after these factors, this is how I work on. Feasible solution for the process 1, 2 or 2, 1. As I say, process 1 has a value of 100 and process 2 has a value of 10. So the profit value 
if they completing within the deadline is 110 i take the second scenario where the process 1 and 3 1 or 3 or 3 or 1 if i combine together process 1 has a value of 100 and process 3 has a value of 15 so the total profit value is 115 this is how the execution of my profits will take place when i'm working on the various projects or various processes with deadline the third scenario if it is 1 and 4 or 4 and 1 1 is 100 4 is 27 so it gives a value of 127 is the optimal one and then the next one is 2 and 3 or 3 and 2 when I combine together it is 25 the optimal solution here it was where it gives me a maximum profit the one which gives me the maximum profit is the most optimal solution over here and the next criteria that I consider is 3 4 4 3 and when I say 3 4 and 4 3 that is 15 plus 27 it gives me a profit value of 42 but the optimal solution with a maximum size is 127 if I run a single process the value is 100 if I run a single process 2 then the value is 10 if I work on a single process 3 then the profit value is 15 and if I work on a single process 4 profit value is 27 but the most optimal solution is for process 1, process 4 when they are executing the maximum profit that I get is 127. So the greedy algorithm to obtain the optimal solution consider the jobs in the non-increasing order of their profits subject to the constraint that the resulting job sequence J is a feasible solution that is I am not considering a greedy approach where J is the feasible solution for all the profits. The non-increasing profit vector is 127, 15 and 10, 2, 1, 2, 1 remains as it is. P1, P4, P3, P2, D1, D4, D3, D2. So what we have done here, we have arranged our processes in the non-increasing order that is the larger to the smaller values and same way the deadlines are also being rearranged. So what we get? The previous values were P1, P2, P3, P4 as 10, 100, 10, 15 and 27 and D1, D2, D3, D4 were 2, 1, 2, 1. So this is how we will be working on the greedy approach. So what happens? I have these processes which have been listed. J is equal to 1 is a feasible one. I say J is equal to 1 and 4 is a feasible one with the processing sequence for 1 as it gives me the output as 127 which is the maximum profit for the deadline scenario. 1, 3 and 4 is not feasible. Now why do I say 1, 3 and 4 is not feasible? Because it exceeds my deadline scenario of 2 and 1. So it is not feasible feasible when I say 1 2 and 4 again it is not feasible because it exceeds the deadline scenario of 1 and 4 and then 1 and 4 is most optimal as it is within the limit of the deadlines and the maximum optimal solution it gives me is 127 now let's study the theorem for the greedy algorithm to obtain the map to obtain the optimal solution for job sequencing. Now let J be a set of K jobs that is J is a job set which we create from the number of jobs which are existing. Now for any of this value of sigma there exists I1, I2 till the value of K be a permutations of jobs in J such that all the deadlines for all the jobs that is if all my small small jobs are local optimized then from di1 less than equal to di2 and will continue till dik so all the job sequencing is between one to the total jobs which are existing in that particular local optima j 
J is a feasible solution if the job in J can be processed in the order of sigma without violating any deadlines or deadly opportunities. That is, I don't exceed the deadlines which are there. So, how do we prove it? We prove it with the way that the definition of a feasible solution is if the jobs in J can be processed in the order without violating any deadlines, then J is a feasible solution. That is, if I am able to process all the jobs which give me an optimal solution in my deadline criteria, then that is the most feasible solution and that is the best proof for any given theorem which is discussed before. To prove that if J is the feasible solution, then all the values represents a possible order in which jobs may be processed. So, how do we obtain it? Suppose we assume as we are implementing the greedy approach, so the greedy approach says we assume whatever is the best suited optimal solution for us. So, the best suited optimal solution for us is we are presuming that J is the most feasible solution. And for every J, there exists a first order sigma with the values of R1, R2 and Rk such that DRJ is greater than J with the values varying from I less than equal to J less than K. And that is for every DR1 value, it is greater than or equal to the DRK value which is greater than K. Each job requires a unit processing time. And for each unit, proce and for each unit processing time, we get the value of the most feasible solution. And if it is lying between the order, the regular order of the feasible solution and the order of 1 the feasible solution that is I1, I2 till Ik and R1, R2 till Rk, then we assume that the, both the orders are not same, they are not equal. Then let be the least index in which sigma 1 and sigma differ in such that Ra is not equal to Ia. And if we assume that the value of Rb is equal to Ia, that is B is greater than A for all the indices that are existing in J, which is less than A, Rj is equal to Ij. Now what is this Ij and Rj? Those are nothing but your job sequencing which are to be executed in the deadline inside the deadline scenario and then we interchange the value of Ra and Rb. So when these values are existing and I1, I2, Ia, Ib and Ik are there as a feasible solution for the local optima then we say that Rb occurs before Ra in I1, I2 and Ik in the original problem where we have not taken the first degree of it and in the first degree R1, R2, Ra, Rb till Rk are existing and for all these values that is I1 is equal to R1, I1 is equal to I2 is equal to R2, Ia minus 1 is equal to Ra minus 1 but Ia is not equal to Rb but Ia is equal to Rb both these scenarios have to be considered. So, when we know that di1 is less than or equal to di2 and it continues to dik, that is all sets of solutions that are existing before it reaches an optimal solution, where the job sequences which are done before it is in the deadline criteria, then since all these values are met in a feasible solution, dra is greater than or equal to a and drb is greater than or equal to b. So, if we interchange the values of Ra and Rb, the resulting permutation which will be existing represents an order of the least index in which sigma 1, 1 and sigma differs in an incrementation by 1. That is, it refers within one level up value of interchange. So, all the jobs in sigma 1, 1 may be processed without violating the deadline. So, we have to keep on representing in a recursive manner how we actually find out the job sequences 
before they do any violations of the deadline. Continuing in this way, sigma 1 can be transformed into sigma without violating the deadline, so on and so forth. Hence, we prove the theorem that we, without violating the deadlines, we can achieve the processes with the optimal solution. So, the theorem 2 says that the greedy method obtains an optimal solution to the job sequencing problem. And here, the proof goes as, if P1 and T1, that is the process and the deadline, when I is lying between 1 and N, we define any instance of job with the sequencing problem. Let I be the set of jobs selected by the greedy method as we're choosing the local optima from the global optima possible. And let J be the set of jobs in a optimal solution. We're presuming that J is a job which is giving me an optimal solution output. And we also assume that I is not equal to J. So what we do, if J, then J cannot be optimal, if J lies in I, then J cannot be optimal because less number of jobs give less profit, which is not true for an optimal solution. Also, if I lies with J is ruled out by the nature of greedy method, then greedy method will select one particular job. According to the maximum profit order, it will select whichever jobs give me a maximum profit, then only those processes will be considered. All the jobs can be finished before the deadline are included. And what happens? So there exists a job A and B such that A lies in I, A does not lie in J, and B lies in J, but B does not lie in I. Let A be the highest profit job such that A lies in I and A does not lie in J. It follows a very greedy method approach for the local optima that PA is greater than or equal to PB which are PA where A and B are two job sequence which are going to happen in a particular process for all the jobs. B lies in J but B does not lie in I. If PB is greater than PA then the greedy method would consider job B before job A that is included in I. So, let SI and SJ be two feasible schedules for the job set I and J respectively. Let I be a job such that small i lies in capital I and small i also lies in J. That is, I is a job that belongs to the schedules generated by the greedy method and the optimal solution. That is, they lie within that. It belongs to that particular scenario of I and J where I can create or I can get a local optimal solution. Let I be scheduled from I to T plus 1 such that S of I and S to the range of I and I plus 1 also lie in S of J.